this produced some very strange amnesias in Western thinking in general, because the, the Russian fear of, of US bases in Ukraine as a result of NATO expansion. Well, during, during the Cold War, a suggestion that NATO and the US should put themselves on a path which implied in future the expulsion of the Russian Navy from Sevastopol and its replacement by the American Navy would have been considered by just about every analyst, except, you know, the most rabid ones who would not have been taken seriously, as a short path to nuclear war. That would have been the, the over, absolutely overwhelming consensus in the 1980s, and therefore to be avoided at all costs. But somehow, uh, I believe it's called the Overton window shifts and things which were previously considered impossible and illegitimate uh, are accepted. This somehow, became normalized in, in Western. And this is, I, I think, uh, also the, the product of historical amnesia, the decline of historical studies. It's the product, I have to say, of the cowardice and conformism of all too much of the Russia and post-Soviet studies and expert community, who once, well, inherited, of course, from the Cold War, but once uh, there was a consensus in Washington and in NATO behind NATO expansion. Uh, all, all too many people simply, and you know, I think as you, who were well aware themselves that this was a disastrous cause, said something completely different in public. Uh, and that, you know, does also have a great deal uh, to do with money, with funding. I mean, in Britain by now, as far as the international affairs think tanks are concerned, uh, there is simply no debate uh, on NATO and Russia policy. I mean, there's some debate about tact, uh, but none about Russia as the enemy, about NATO expansion as necessary. And this does have a great deal to do with their dependence on state funding, on funding from the Ministry of Defense and uh, to a, a considerable extent by now from America as well. And uh, what uh, I think NATO also exemplifies to a degree um, is the iron law of bureaucracy, which whereby you know, institutions created for one specific purpose, then their basic goal is to maintain themselves and to survive. And if necessary, they will create, as indeed um, a Russian official warned in the 1990s, uh, what, what sort of defensive alliance creates the conditions uh, which it's supposed to defend against? Uh, well, the answer is, of course, an institution which wishes to survive. You see it with domestic security services as well. Um, if there isn't a, a, a threat, they will try to generate for, for their own um, for their own continued existence. But in the process, you also have had, and this was so apparent once again in the 1990s, a tremendous propaganda generated by NATO and, of course, by a certain NATO government, tremendously funded, essentially to shut down debate on this issue and to promote the, the NATO line in public.